Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the first class of intermediate macroeconomics. The aim of uh, today's lecture is to help you understand what is going to be the syllabus of macroeconomics and how I intend to kind of, you know, cover this syllabus in the next two, two and a half months. To begin with, we can say that the entire macroeconomics can be divided in four main units. The first unit that we have, this is related to the labor market. In this, you would be studying the demand and supply of labor. We will try to understand how the wages are determined for the labor market. What is full employment level? What is natural rate of unemployment? What is natural rate of employment? How do you go from employment towards output? This is the first unit. Then in unit two, we would be talking about aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves. Now, when it comes to aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve, we majorly have few important uh, chapters here. So, you know, we have readings coming from Don Bush and we have reading coming from Blanchard. These are the two important readings that you would be covering. Then as part of the third unit, you would be going ahead and doing inflation, unemployment, and expectations. Here, we would be covering First of all, you know, the inflation part, which means we would be talking about what is the Phillips curve. And then we would be talking about very, very important concept of what is adaptive and rational expectations. In adaptive and rational expectation, we are going to go ahead and see how these differ from each other. And we're going to also talk about what we call as the policy effectiveness. So, you know, if there is adaptive expectation, how policy is going to act? If there is rational expectation, how policy is going to act? Which policy would be effective? Whether policy would actually be effective or whether it would be ineffective? We would be talking about that. Finally, unit four is going to be about microeconomic foundations. So we are going to go ahead and talk about three important foundations here. We are going to talk about consumption. In consumption, we'll talk about the various hypotheses related to consumption, which definitely come in exam. The second thing that we would be talking about will be investment. In investment, we would be talking about how investment differs across uh, different concepts. What is a business fixed investment? What is residential investment? What is inventory investment? How are the three different from each other? What's the kind of theory that holds for each of these? And the third that we would be talking about would be the demand money. This is majorly the entire course of intermediate macroeconomics. Now, you know, when it comes to macroeconomics, this, if, if we go towards the importance of the units, the first unit that you see, which is the labor market, is usually a very small unit. This in itself is not a topic which it may come directly also, but 
but usually this topic acts as a way for you to understand the labor market helps you determine what we call as the aggregate supply curve so the aim is not to only go ahead and understand the labor market the aim is to go from the labor market towards the as curve now you would have already known by now what is the is and the lm curve so the aim is to use the concept of the is and the lm curve to help you enable and understand what is aggregate demand once you understand aggregate demand and aggregate supply the aim is to go ahead and find the equilibrium condition and from there determine the equilibrium price and equilibrium employment okay now in macroeconomics the questions that come in exam usually eight questions would come in exam during the period of covid 19 they had in, you know when students went from off uh, online to offline they increased the time and they increased the number of options also and out of the eight questions you are supposed to go ahead and do five questions each is going to carry 15 marks so it is going to give you a 75 marks paper now the weightage that is given to each topic is according to the weightage that exists for each lecture so for example if you look in through your reading you will see that unit 4 this demands 30 lectures whereas unit 3 this only demands 15 lectures according to your college right it requires 15 lectures whereas unit 2 and unit 1 together they require approximately 17 lectures so if you notice the combined weightage of unit 1 plus 2 is 17 and unit 3 is 15 so they have an equal weightage and unit 4 in itself is 30 lecture so if i combine this comes up to approximately 62 lectures in total so ideally the questions that would be coming in exam will be according since this has double the weightage as compared to all the topics put together you can expect at least you know up to two or three questions from this topic followed by this topic you can expect one question from this topic one question from this topic and since this is a combined topic we are expecting that maybe two questions will come from this so two from this let's say two from this four and three from this this is approximately how the questions would come in exam another thing which you have to remember is it is going to be a cross uh, topic paper also so sometimes what they will do is they will give you a question that question will have two parts the first part may be for 5 marks and second for 10 but this may be from topic or unit 1 and this may be from unit 4 so you have to be thorough with all the topics it's not like that you can miss one topic and you can still you know uh, get good grade in exam you have to do all the relevant topics related to this exam now let's come to our code so when you will look at our portal you will already find all the recorded topics these topics recorded topics cover majority of the course so you will have unit 1 2 thoroughly covered unit 3 partially covered and unit 4 thoroughly covered so every time that we meet in a hybrid you know when we meet for a live class 
I would be declaring it to you that you know what you have to go through unit one thoroughly, do unit one completely from the recordings, then come in class. And I would be getting some past year questions that we would be solving related to those recordings. If there would be any doubt, we would also be solving those doubts. If there is any topic which would not be clear, we would also be going ahead and clearing that topic. So the aim would be to go ahead and I will be giving you a summary of the subject, but at of that topic. But at the same time, you have to look through the recording of that topic and then you have to come back to me. So for today, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to begin with the summary of chapter 5. It's going to be more than a summary. It's going to be a complete full-fledged revision of chapter 5. What you should be doing is you should be going ahead, going to the portal and you should be looking at chapter 5 of your unit and you know although there is no suggested topic given for labor market separately. I have gone ahead and added an introductory uh, chapter only on labor market. It will make you aware of certain conditions like why W should be equal to P into MBL and so on. You should be going ahead and looking at this introductory chapter on labor market on your own before you come for the next lecture. At the same time, you should be going through this chapter 5, both the live part and the recorded part. And in the next lecture, when I come with you, I will be going ahead and I will be doing some back questions of this chapter. And I will also be doing some past year questions of this chapter. So that is something which I intend to do in the next class. Slowly, I will also be teaching you the answer writing technique. How should you be writing an answer in the exam? That is something that we will also be going ahead and looking at. Okay, now let's go ahead and begin with chapter 5. So this is about monetary and fiscal policy. <clears throat> 